Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and I know you guys have seen this title. I will never, in all my years of investing, as long as everything right now stays the same, and their current business drivers, their fundamentals, never will I ever invest in Verizon or AT&T stock. And there's a reason for this, right? Um, if you see me invest in one of these companies, it is not me. Call help. Um, but the reason for this, one is their declining business model. That's the first reason. And I can show this through multiple metrics in the overall sector. My favorite company in this sector is actually T-Mobile, even though T-Mobile is still a bad company in my opinion. It is better than Verizon and AT&T, which in my opinion are worse companies. So this company has somehow managed to get a market cap of $159 billion, which is absolutely eye-opening to me, but... As you can see, their earnings per share over the last 10 years has remained flat. And if I'm not mistaken, that's with doing share buybacks. So their earnings have remained about flat, right? They've not grown their earnings in 10 years, which is absolutely horrific, by the way. Their stock price over the last 10 years has dipped. So if you invest in this company 10 years ago on the price return, you would actually be losing money. And this is the same thing for AT&T stock. They always look cheap because of this. They do not grow. And if you do not grow, you're not going to get good return on capital on your investment. If we take a look at their key financials, they have a lot of history, right? But their annual revenue has not grown at all. Like, the last five years have been the same. The last ten years have been losing annual revenue per share. And, and like I said before, they're actually buyback shares. So the company has not grown their revenue. Why you would want to invest in a company like this, I don't know. And if we look in their margins, they actually have declining margins. Over the last 10 years, 10 years ago, they had margins of about 62%. Now margins of 56%. Their margins are declining over time. Their free cash flow, we see a similar story. Over 10 years, it has been very stagnant, up and down, but remaining about the same. With share buybacks, by the way, as you can see on the quarterly FCF per share chart as well. So they have stagnant revenue, decreasing margins, stagnant free cash flow on a per share basis with buybacks. And if we look at their net debt, it has only been increasing. So they're have a, be, becoming in, in a worse and worse financial position as well in a declining sector being telecoms and fighting for a certain amount of declining market share. And in terms of their dividends, this is reflected also over their dividends. Their dividends have actually been decreasing in terms of the speed that they hike them. In the last 10 years, they have a hike rate of 2.3%, which is absolutely horrible, below the average inflation rate, so you're actually losing money on these hikes. Um, but recently, it's decreased to less about 2%, which is less than that 23 and it was just 1.9%, which is less than that 23 And if we look at their shares outstanding, they have actually been diluting the shareholder. They, I thought they were doing buybacks. They're not doing buybacks, to my mistake, they're diluting the shareholder. But the per share charts uh, give you how much value you're getting per share, which is not increasing. As we take a look at AT&T here, it has a almost worse than uh, Verizon. And we could see this in the metrics in the last 10 years, a steady decline in terms of their share price and a quarterly EPS rate, also a stagnant to steady decline. Um, this company has not provided you returns on a stock price basis. If we look at their revenue, we could see the same thing, stagnant to declining. If we take a look at their margins, we could see that their margins have been stagnant, not necessarily declining, but not increasing either. In terms of their free cash flow, stagnant to declining, and this is more clear on the quarterly free cash flow chart than the annual because it isn't as updated. If we look at their net debt, same thing with increasing debt over time. If we look at their dividends, they actually recently had a dividend cut because they can't keep up with that dividend and if we look at their share without saying they're also diluting the shareholder so both these companies on all metrics appear to be yield traps and bad companies in a dying sector i rest my case i'll see you guys in the next one peace